Hey there, today we're going to be working on changing out the screen in my ThinkPad T430. And not just changing it out, we're going to be upgrading it. This screen originally is 1600 by 900, but here we actually have a 1080p screen. It's the same size, except this one is actually also a matte display instead of being a um, glossy one. And like I said, this is actually 1080p instead of the 1600 by 900. So the 1080p screen is not an official upgrade or anything to this laptop, but we have this adapter which I bought off eBay, and it converts the laptop's built-in screen to work with the connector on the new one. So we're going to take the laptop apart, put the new screen in, and make sure it works. So the first thing we have to do is flip the laptop over and start unscrewing it. Luckily with the ThinkPads it's really easy to take them apart. On the bottom you have a number of screws that have little keyboard icons next to them. So if you just take those screws out, the keyboard should come out and then you can move on to the next step. So there's a screw here and here, which are also the RAM. Under this panel is like I said where the RAM goes and I also currently have an SSD in here. We need to pull out this screw. You also need to take out some of the extra screws like this one here, this one here, and this one here, and this one here in order to get the keyboard fully detached. Does it want to come out? Oh, come on. There we go. Come on. Right, there are still a few screws I missed. There's this screw here, this screw here, not the very top one, but the one underneath, and then this little screw here, right under where the battery is. If you've taken out all of those screws, now we should be able to take the keyboard out by flipping the laptop over. And the keyboard could just slide out from the bottom and pop off. Also, remember that there's a screw right here next to the RAM to take the keyboard out, which would be why my keyboard doesn't want to come out. That would be a problem. Okay, now with all those screws out, we can take the keyboard out. There we go. Oh yeah, hello trouble getting my keyboard off. On most T430s that won't be a problem, you just slide it up and it comes out. Since this is actually not a T430 keyboard, it's actually a T420 keyboard, it didn't 100% fit in there properly, so I had to wedge it out with the screwdriver, but now it's out. And then just make sure you unplug the little ribbon cable, which connects to there, and take the keyboard away. Next, we need to take off the palm rest here which there is a screw here and then here and then the whole thing could just snap off around the edges and then we should be able to just pop it up From the front, pops off. Good anyway, come on. There we, go. there we go. And then be careful when you detach the touchpad. The little cable here for the touchpad, be careful in attaching that. So, with the laptop taken apart like this now, we can get a closer look at the inside. Right here we have our Wi Fi card. Under this little flap is another stick of RAM. And right here, screwed down actually, is our display connector. Since I am using a adapter, we need to unscrew this display connector and screw the adapter into place. If you're not using an adapter, you obviously just unscrew this and then screw in the cable from your display into here. I'm going to leave that... No, I guess I'll take, I'll take that off now, and then I'll show you how to get inside the screen.
Just unscrew the little screw holding the connector down. And then very gently pull up on the connector and attach it. So now in order to get the screen out, we should, we should just be able to just pop off this bezel. It's just held on with some clips. We just pop it off. Should easily just come off. Inside the screen, you can see that there is a screw in each of the four corners. Taking these out will let you take the panel out, and then you put the new panel in and you screw it back down. Not too hard. You can also see it's a little dirty inside my screen. I don't know how I got dust inside the screen, but let's take out the four screws from the panel. When you're inside the top panel here, be careful of the webcam, which is right above the panel, and also be careful of all of the extra wires, some of which are for the antennas, like your Bluetooth antenna and your Wi-Fi antenna. So like I said, the instructions here are obviously the same, regardless of what panel you're putting in. It's just that if you're using a 1080p panel like I am, you have to connect the adapter cable and then find somewhere to stash the adapter. So with all four screws attached, the screen should just pop out, assuming the wires are not in the way. Yep, just pop the screen on out. And the cable is actually routed sort of under here and under the hinge. I hope we don't have to take the hinge off to get the cable out, but I think I might. That might be unfortunate. Yeah, if you um if you were just replacing this with another panel that used the same cable, I think you, you should be able to just unplug the cable from the back of the display of the panel here and plug a new one in. Since I'm using the adapter, I need to do a couple extra steps and take this hinge off in order to get the cable unrouted from underneath it. Normally, you wouldn't have to do this. Hey there, we've got our new panel in now. I've connected the new display cable to the back of it, and I've routed the cable underneath this hinge, which, again, you wouldn't normally have to do, because you would just use the cable that's already there. But since I use the adapter, I need to take the hinge off and wrap the cable underneath it and plug it into the back. So very simply, you put the new panel in using the same little four posts, and then you just screw it back on down. The same four screws. <clears throat> Alright, for the screen screwed in, we make sure to pull off this protective film before we put the computer back together. And then we take our bezel and we snap it back on. All right, with the top bezel snapped back on, time to put everything else back together. At least with me, with this one, I need to find a place to stash the adapter, which I might just stuff in here, which is normally where a GPU would go if you had like a special model with an NVIDIA chip, I think. But, or maybe I can mount it here on top of the RAM or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, we just take our display cable, we plug it in where the old one went, and we screw it back down, the same little bracket and screw that it came with originally, and we should be good to go here. Alright, I've decided to just stash the adapter under here. Like I said, is where a GPU would go if you had a laptop with a separate GPU. And now all let's do is snap the palm rest and the keyboard back on and turn it on and see if it works. Pressing the screen on the laptop isn't really that complicated. The worst thing here was just having to find a place for this adapter. If you don't have the adapter, it's even simpler. You don't even have to worry about unplugging cable, this cable and stuff. You just use the one that's already there. When putting the palm rest back on, make sure to plug in the little cable here, which connects the touchpad. That is important. And we screw it back down. And then after screwing it back down, we put our keyboard in, we attach its cable, put all the other screws in the bottom we took off back in, and we are done. Make sure the palm rest is snapped back on. Screw. Goes back here. Alright. Under 
your keyboard. And we plugs in to the motherboard. Cable here, plugs in there. And then just slide it back in. Slide it keyboard in from the top. Press it down. So it clicks. And then press down a little bit. Close the lid. Flip her on over. Make sure everything is sealed up nice and tight, putting all the screws back on in the laptop. Alright, we're all screwed back together. Now it's the moment of truth. We grab ourselves a power brick and we make sure it turns on and that we get a picture on the screen. We get our power brick. Plug in our power cable and power button. What happens? And we got a picture on the screen. Look at that. It works. Remember, this is our new 1080p screen with the adapter, and it's working just fine. It's loading up Refind, the boot manager. And from there, I can double check what the resolution of the screen is at. And we can see that it is, in fact, running at 1920 by 1080. So our screen upgrade has been a success. So thank you for watching.